Poof. Um. Hey guys, it's Edbert. Today, I thought we'd take a break from talking about coding interviews and just, you know, talk about something a little less serious, like career progression. For those who do not know, I started my career at Apple straight out of college as a Google equivalent L3 engineer. In less than four years, I became a senior engineer, equivalent of a Google L5. And a lot of people want to know how I was able to make this happen. But that question is actually much more complicated than it looks. There are actually two questions in that. The first question is, how do I become a senior engineer? The second question is, how do I get there as quickly as possible? And truthfully, each of these questions warrants its own video. I won't be addressing those specifically, but instead, I'll just be talking about it in a general sense. I'll be discussing my circumstances and why I think that led me to pursue my career as heavily as I did. Finally, I'll also be talking about whether or not I think it's worth it for other people to pursue becoming a senior engineer in such a short amount of time. After all, everything has a cost, and being able to achieve that title in less than four years is no exception. So if you like this video, please like and comment down below. I'm trying to mix up the content on my channel to not just be strictly informative, but also have some informal and personal discussions like this one. So with that, let's begin. Now, the first thing I want to do is address what constitutes normal. The purpose of this is so that way you can standardize what is normal in your own personal career. For this, I'll be using the Google equivalent bands where L3 is a junior engineer, L4 is a mid-level engineer, and L5 is a senior level engineer. And the reason I'm doing this is so that way you understand that getting a Google L5 equivalent title in less than four years is extremely abnormal. A junior engineer is usually someone with zero to two years of experience. A mid-level engineer requires a minimum of two years, and a senior engineer starts at about five years. Now, those are just the minimums. On average, you should expect to move from a junior engineer role to a mid-level within about two and a half to three and a half years. To move from a mid-level to a senior role takes much longer, and you can expect on average about eight years of industry experience. While you can argue that my two years of experience working while going to school puts me at six years of experience, well, overall, that is only a little bit more than the minimum requirement for a senior engineer role. In fact, there are only two other people I know who became a senior engineer in less than four years. One graduated Cornell in three years and became a staff software engineer at LinkedIn in three years. The other was at the top 5% of his class at UIUC. And me? I'm just a 3.5 GPA guy from UCSD who took almost five years to finish his degree. I imagine most of you guys out there are actually gonna relate more to me than to these natural born geniuses. So to accomplish what it took these natural geniuses three years to do, I had to put myself through an enormous amount of stress and give up a lot of time. And this is the first cost to being able to accelerate your career, your time. While you might trade time for money or skill, you also take away time for doing something else. And for me, I wasn't investing this time out of a desire to get better necessarily, nor did I have anything else going on in my life outside of work. After the first three months at Apple, I began to realize I was messing up far, far more than I had anticipated. There's always a startup cost to learning new code, of course, but it became apparent that I was not a good engineer as I thought I was. I was constantly breaking things and found myself with little to no ability to keep up with my more senior colleagues. To compound this, the social life wasn't really there for me. I was basically stuck between playing video games and doing work. And so with that fear factor driving me and nothing better to do with my time, I spent several hours outside of work and gave up a lot of my Saturdays just to make my work better. Imagine feeling like you're gonna get fired every day for six months. That's essentially what it felt like for me. Now, for most well-adjusted people, I think the fact that you have an alternative is actually a good thing as opposed to having a forcing function, which makes you pursue career progression. And there are two reasons why I think this. The first thing is that I really think your 20s are really more for exploring what you want to do with the rest of your life. You should be finding something that you're willing to dedicate hours and hours to, even when no one is looking. Why marry yourself to a career that you don't even know if you're gonna enjoy? To use me as an example, if I didn't believe in computer science or even remotely liked programming, I wouldn't have spent the better part of a decade working for no pay or below minimum wage. And yet, I invested my time and effort into a skill set and craft that I truly enjoyed and believed in. And it's thanks to that effort and that passion that I'm able to get to where I am today. 
there's no doubt in my mind that if I didn't work for as long and as hard as I did, I wouldn't have achieved a senior engineer title in those four years. Because it's not just those four years. It's also all the time I invested into Android development and studying and practicing all before I even got my first job at Apple. For most people who are senior engineers, they have spent their entire careers in the industry and are often forced to make that career progression simply because they have people at home who rely on them to get a better income. On the other hand, you, the viewer, probably are not in that position. There's nobody at home who relies on you to bring home the bacon. And you don't need to worry about too many responsibilities. Furthermore, once you get to that senior engineer level, then what? You're going to need to perform at that level continuously in order to avoid getting demoted or fired. So imagine all the hard work and stress that you've been doing to get there. Now double that. How does that sound? Do you want to do that on a daily basis? No, not really. But that's exactly what it takes to really just maintain your spot. So why force that upon yourself? Take the time to actually do your profession the right way. Take your time to cultivate the skills and craft while being able to pursue the things that actually matter in your life. If you're not as passionate or as focused or as driven as say, the next guy, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to force yourself to do that. And by all means, if computer science and engineering is something you've already decided that you want to dedicate your life to, then go for it. Which leads me to the second reason why I would not recommend pursuing a senior title at a breakneck pace. I think the alternative of simply taking your time and building a network of support and professionalism is actually far more valuable and will serve you better in the long run. There are people you will run into over and over again as you switch companies and progress throughout your career. And you will want to, or rather should I say need to, help each other out. That's essentially networking, and all networking has a real human basis where you genuinely enjoy spending time with the other person. This is opposed to having a quid pro quo where you only spend time with people who can only do things for you. The ability to network and find genuine people who you want to spend time with is infinitely far more valuable than simply looking for people you can do business with. And this is a time in your life when you can network with people not just in your industry but also outside of it because you'll have far more in common. You all just graduated school and you're really looking for people to hang out with more so than figure out how to progress in your career. And for me, only now am I beginning to understand that. The people I went to high school with, I am still in touch with. That has been a really great way to understand what has been happening in the industry and keep up with the job market during COVID. Once life picks up, it's so much harder to expand your network. There's less time to go out and meet people, less time to do things because there are adult responsibilities and obligations. Time is one of those things you can never really get back. And while you're young, you have plenty of that. So I really recommend that you spend your youth trying to figure out the best way to use your time. Once you've solidified yourself and you really know what you want, then you can throw yourself into the rat race and the career corporate ladder. But at least have that moment. Have that moment where you're going to find a network of peers who you can fall back on when times get tough, who can pick you up during the bad times and elevate you during the good times. All that is worth much more than a pay raise and a pat on the back from your boss. So that'll do for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.